was a bit nervous. I uh, had a dodgy internet connection for my last interview. Uh, and I thought, well, gosh, is this going to work? Because uh, Tash McGill, she's not in New Zealand at the moment. She is in the United States. Uh, Tash, uh, kia ora. How are you? Kia ora. Wow. I'm doing great. How great. are you doing? I'm doing very well. Very relieved to know that the internet is holding so far. Whereabouts in particular are you in the United States at the moment? I am in the glorious Colorado, the state of Colorado, full of mountains, a few lakes. I had a moose walk past the house just before. I'm, Great times. I'm saying, just looking at your background there, this is a real background. You're in a log cabin with like snowshoes on the wall. Is that accurate? There are snowshoes on the wall. Wow. Yeah. This is this is very uh, very frontier of you, I must say. It's, well, uh, you know. Yeah. No, very cool. Hey, um, big news in the United States. You can be my American correspondent for a week, can't you? Like you're in the... In the states, so why not? Yeah, uh, dive in. The big news, of course, dominating uh, news in the states is the Trump trial, the Stormy Daniels hush money trial in particular, because there's quite—I mean, there's there's a there's a queue of people wanting to sue or indict Trump for various uh, criminal activities, from uh, from tax fraud to, uh, to 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 election fraud. But probably the most um, salacious one, the one hitting the headlines, is the Stormy Daniels one. Don't want to go into the details, but interested on your thoughts. What do you make of it? Look, honestly, there's there's case after case after case, and it's to, it, it's hard to keep up with exactly which indictment he's facing at which time. And so, frankly, I haven't been because it's such a distraction, and it's all it does is fuel the fire of those who want to believe that he's an underdog and that therefore he's somehow being persecuted. Uh, whereas, to me, I just think. Look, where there's smoke, there's fire. And by the time you have that many charges, that many court cases, that many state uh, attorneys trying to hunt you down to get you into court for some sort of measure of justice, then by that stage, it should be a good indication of character. You know how you see something happen over and over and over and over again? Yep. Uh, a pattern is usually indicative of, of what's going on. Uh, so what I've seen is that, look, I've, I've got serious questions about why somebody who has uh, some clear character deficits in that regard, um, you know, should even be considered. I think if you've got that many charges against you, the fact that he can even be running for government is outrageous. And therefore, I don't want to give it my attention because it actually makes me so furious uh, because it just seems like we should be smarter than that. Yeah. And, and when we say we, I mean, it's easy to point the finger and go, oh, gosh, these Americans, how can they, how can they, um, overlook some of these what are obvious character flaws but i mean like you say this isn't necessarily going to be bad news for trump whatever happens whether he's indicted and indicted i mean as long as they don't put him in prison for the election i mean that's never happened before that you've got a uh, a candidate for the president who is actually serving jail time during the election campaign anything short of that though is just putting logs on the fire is just uh, giving him some more media attention and those people that love D donald trump as you say they're going to see him as the underdog they're going to see him as as the persecuted one it's not necessarily going to hurt his election chances no, in fact, in some respects, it will actually be helping it. And as I said to friends here the other day, I can't believe that four years later, we're back in the same position yeah. where, unbelievably, the best two candidates in the country to run for president are Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And the issue is, is that it, it leads us into this place of whataboutism, yeah. which is, well, yeah, you know, he might have done this and that, but what about, mm. and then they talk about something that he, you know, is supposedly has achieved or supposedly has done, which is beneficial to other people. And it's amazing to me what we as, as a society, and, I, and I'll bring this in closer to home. It's amazing to me as a society, what we are prepared to let people get away with. Yeah. So I have a former business partner. That former, part, former business partner has done some dodgy dealings all over town. Mm -hmm. That's why we're no longer in business with That's them. why they're former. In, yeah. in fact, we recently discovered not only have we had, you know, we've had clients come back to us who saying, oh, look, we just can't work with this person anymore, blah, blah, blah. We've actually had, we found out just recently that this person's uh, been taken to small claims court once again. Wow. And yet we deal on the daily with, oh, but they're such a good person. And oh, yeah, but they do such great things for the community. And oh, yeah, but they're so great to, and I'm like, you know what? The whataboutism at a certain point in time doesn't matter because how many how many bad calls, how many mistakes, how many, hold on a second, you paid what to who? 
in order to cover up your dirty little secrets. How yeah. many times do we have to do we go through that before we actually say, hey, you know what? Enough is enough. And maybe there is time for actually three strikes you're out. Mm. Or you know what? You've done enough. And, and that's where I think, you know, New Zealanders are very passive. You and I have yeah. talked about that before. Um, but Americans also, you know, they're prepared to put up with a lot if they think that there's going to be a benefit to them. Mm. And so in United States, if people think that, and and look, you know, it happened under Trump's last presidency, big changes in the Supreme Court that mm-hmm. really um, had a big dramatic impact to, uh, and the implication of which is still rolling out in terms of um, people who are pro-life. Yep. Uh, and so there are people who fervently believe that furthering their own cause is okay, regardless of the cost, regardless of the character of the people involved, so long as it leads to what they believe is a good outcome. Mm. And that really is the part that, you know, is we've got to be careful in New Zealand in particular, we've got to be careful in our own communities, that we don't put up with bad character, that we don't put up with repeated behaviours that are abusive, that are uh, deceptive, that are duplicitous, uh, in order to get what we think is going to be the better outcomes, because that's actually just selfish, and that's on us, right? Yeah, Yeah, certainly. I want this thing, therefore I'll put up with somebody who's prepared to damage or potentially do harm to others. Now, um, two different sides of this one that I'd like to get your views on. Uh, the the impact that this has on democracy generally, because, I mean, like you said, the two best candidates according to uh, the primaries, uh, uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, democracy has spoken, the voters have had their say, the members of the various mm-hmm. political parties have said, this is our candidate. For uh, for people to say, well, I don't think he should be the candidate, that's mm-hmm. in some ways a moot point. If Americans want to vote for Donald Trump, isn't that their business to interfere with that process and say he shouldn't be the candidate? kind of ignores democracy, doesn't it? Well, I think it's not ignoring democracy. Democracy is just the it's just the practice. It's just the method, right? Yeah. So what is the impact to democracy? Democracy becomes dumber. <laughs> democracy becomes lowest common denominator. Yeah. Democracy becomes, hey, winning at any cost, we have to have the majority vote. Therefore, you know, who do we think gives us the best case of winning versus who do we think is going to do the best job? And I think that's the difference between say, heaven forbid I use uh, the papal vote as an example, um, <laughs> but the difference, between, the difference between discernment and democracy is often actually who's going to make the biggest difference, who's the right person for the job yep. versus who's going to win, uh, who's going to who's going to win us uh, more popularity, who's going to you know get us further across the finish line. So I think that's one of the really big impacts to democracy on either side of the line that you sit, whether you are right or left, you know, socialist or capitalist, mm. um, the democracy loses out because the process becomes less trustworthy and people become less trusting in the process. So we've seen this over the last few elections, both in uh, the United States, but also at home in New Zealand, mm-hmm. where people People become even less inclined to vote. We had terrible voter turnout in our local body elections. The reason why people don't believe their vote makes a difference anymore because they see these kind of candidates being the ones who get the support. So they see that winning at all costs doesn't actually mean, hey, this person really cares about the outcomes that matter for me. And once again, often we think about politics at a national level having the biggest impact on us, but it really can be those local body elections where it really makes it difference. And so the place that you live in day to day is often where you need to be thinking. And so that that disenchantment with democracy, that's where democracy loses in this. Yeah. Hey, wanting to look at the opposite side of the coin, because there's some people that are saying, you know, because of all these charges against Donald Trump, he shouldn't uh, be available. He's not a viable candidate for the president of the United States. The opposite argument, and I know this is something that Trump supporters are trying to push through the Supreme Court, because he used to be a president, or because he was the president when some of these crimes were committed, that he should have uh, an absolute um, indemnity. He, indemnity, yeah, exactly. He, he he should be able to commit any crime that he wants just because he's the president of the United States. That sounds very scary indeed, and I, I suppose the spectre of that potentially happening if uh, Donald Trump gets elected. 
Well, let me just remind you of what Henry VIII was able to get away with because he had total indemnity yeah, yeah. as the king of England. And also, by the way, the head of the church at that time. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know that, uh, you know, if you give absolute power, absolutely, it will corrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the risk is if you, if there are no checks and balances when you hold a position of such power, whether it's, you know, we wouldn't hold our, our most our most wealthy, our most well-rewarded uh, CEOs and businessmen, we wouldn't say, hey, Graham Hart, because you're in that top job, you can do whatever you want. No. Uh, and I think as uh, Eric Watson recently learned, uh, it doesn't matter how high up the chain you are. Yeah. The reality is, is that tax law will get you eventually. Mm. Uh, and there's certain rules and protocols that make society a better and safer place. And we've learned that over centuries, that that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so the idea that just because somebody's president, they can have full spectrum indemnity. Yeah. Well, Actually, again, let's go back to war crimes. Let's go back to, uh, you know, absolute flagellation of the system. Yep. Is that really what we want? I don't think so. I think that ultimately, regardless of the position that you hold, um, you hold that position with the rights and also the responsibilities. Mm. And so if you are prepared to, for somebody to throw out their responsibilities in order to hold that role, then uh, there's no space for justice. There's no checks and balances on the powers of office. And one of the important things about the United States is that those three those three parts of their political system, right, there's the federal, the judicial branch, the judicial branch, and then there's the one other that I can never remember the name of. But basically, you have the lawmakers, you have the law keepers, and then you have the other bits who try and keep it all in balance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if you do away with that by saying, well, the president can do whatever they want at any time and never be held to account for it, uh, we're going to find ourselves in, in autocratic states and in, in dictatorships instead of democracies. And we're going to find ourselves, I think, um, you know, whilst people talk about how great benevolent dictators might be, I've never actually seen one play out on the world stage, yeah. nor have I read about a successful one in the history books. Exactly. So, Even the ones that start benevolent, as you say, um, absolute power corrupts absolutely in that regard. So they can start off great, but yeah, that's not the way that human nature and history goes. Hey, Tash, appreciate your comments. As always, I'll let you get back to the, the fun in the Colorado mountains. Thanks very much for being on the show today. Cheers, mate. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.